that's funny you should ask, ma'am. We are here at Santa Cruz doing our very first DIY video for those that want to retrofit their beautiful G2 with our new, much simplified rudder control system. And if you stick around, ma'am, you're going to see an amazing thing. Okay, so welcome to uh, Santa Cruz's uh, first video on DIY retrofitting of the rudder control system from the old Dyneema cable to a new very fancy uh, stainless steel cord uh, single cable. Uh, what we've got here laid out are the tools that you're going to need. You're going to need a good Phillips head, 7 16 and a half inch uh, box wrenches, screw gun. Uh, you're going to have a couple of different size drills. You're going to do 3 16 uh, 5 16 and 3 8 um, Aside from that, you really don't have a lot of uh, tool requirements. Next, we're going to go to the, uh, the hardware package and the uh, parts that you're going to receive in the kit when you get it from us. You're going to have a, an updated rudder control system. You probably have the old style that has uh, two sides on it. We've updated it to a single uh, push-pull system. Of course, the new cable. A backer plate that retains the cable. Uh, screws to hold the uh, control lever in place hardware to hold your backer plate in place and then right this way then you're going to have your um, rear captivating plate the asundry hardware your rudder system with a uh, uh, a plate that's uh, going to be attached to that Good. okay so what we have here is one of our new uh, G2 urban camo uh, boats and we're going to show you from start to finish the install of the new rudder control system that we just uh, went over the parts uh, and tools needed with you. Um, the first thing that we do is we remove the handle, uh, the side uh, handle from the gunnel, and then we fit on a template or a jig that allows us to drill the holes exactly where they need to be. Now when you get um, the kit, you will have a laminated cardboard jig that you can use. Key, key parts of this are lining up the top two holes so that you, that's kind of a reference point for you, and then that leaves these three holes in perfect uh, location uh, for marking. I'm going to go ahead and drill. The two holes that are uh, uh, closest to the rear of the boat are 3 16 holes. The front hole is a uh, 5 16 hole. That's for your actual lever control. Voila, there's your holes. Now what I normally do, I actually upsize these holes to a quarter inch because those plates uh, are a lot easier to get. It's kind of a blind plate. You've got to stick your hand up underneath it here to get that plate in. Uh, it's easier to line up the holes by um, oversizing um, the holes a little bit. So what we're going to also do is we're going to uh, drill a penetration through the hull up here on this uh, this one uh, mounting bracket here. Actually, it's just where it's formed uh, to accommodate the rudder control cable going through. So we're going to put a 5 16 hole through here, which gives us enough room to fish the uh, cable through as well as fit a grommet on to help uh, make it waterproof. So now we've got the hole drilled and we're ready to go. We just have to remove these two uh, uh, stop nuts off the end of the cable because we're going to use, um, we're going to put these back on once we get it through this hole and up towards the front of the boat. So what we do is we just fish that on through. Actually, there's nuts off. We're going to put this uh, grommet on. It'll just help us uh, to make the boat a little bit more watertight. And it slides right on. This is a fitted grommet for this sized cable. So we're going to fish that all the way up so it's out of our way. And then we're going to fish our cable through the hull of the boat up towards the front hatch. And that's about the right amount of distance to have right there. I'm going to grab those uh, two stop nuts and bring them towards the front of the boat where we're going to start the control assembly. Okay, so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to reach inside the hull of the boat and magically pull out the end of the cable. This is the business end that we need. So we're going to go ahead and 
thread those nuts back on. Typically I take them to about a quarter, of the first nut, about a quarter of an inch from the back of the bottom of the threads. Go ahead and, uh, oh, can't do that yet. We'll put the plate, the retainer plate on, and then thread that other nut on. And you'll see there's a slit in this plate that the cable can slide right through. And then you just put your, uh, your fitting through it. And then this nut, we're just going to hand tighten for right now because we got to put the, uh, the actual rudder control lever on. So we'll take all this hardware off. The lever handle is always tough to get off and on, so be ready for that. It's kind of a pain, but that snug fit makes it a lot better to get rid of all that slot. Just pull that black plate off. This is what's going to go inside the boat. It's a rubber spacer bushing and the, contr the actual control arm. All right, that goes inside. Now what, what we found is it's better to, to have that acclimated this way so that the cable is, uh, or your Z-bend is facing towards the inside of the boat. So hopefully you see that the Z-bend the tip of it's on the outside, what will be the outside of the boat. So we're going to now put this, now that we've got it acclimated the way we want, we're going to tighten down these two nuts. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the, uh, the nuts tightened down on this uh, cable and this retainer, uh, this retaining plate. Real important, tighten them down hard, use a Loctite or some type of uh, uh, thread uh, lock on it because you don't want this to come undone. It's a real pain once you've got the boat put together. It's a pain to get this back um, apart and then tighten down again. So put some oomph into it and some Loctite. Okay, now what we do is we take the cable and we're gonna fish it back through the boat. And it's a lot easier said than done. Come on around this side, Greg, because you're gonna see easier this way, I think. The first thing I do is find that 5 16 hole and start working the lever controller through it. You want to keep that lever, lever towards the upward acclimation. So when you're looking inside the boat, you'll see that that lever is straight up and down. I've, I'll do a video of a boat that I've cut a hole in the side so you can actually see it from the inside. All right, so from there, what we're doing, we're going to go ahead and put these we're going to make the connection of the uh, plate to the actual boat. And you'll see that I'm doing this. It's pretty no fuss, no muss. Notice these holes are oversized. That's why it's no fuss, no muss. Alright, so that way these line up real nice. Even when you even even if you got arthritis in your hands, it makes it easier to line up. And I do have arthritis in my hands. Alright. So we got our there we go. And that should pop in nice and tight. Get a close up of that if you don't mind. See how much thread is showing. That's about what you should have. Um uh, sticking out through the boat. That way you're guaranteeing a firm uh, attachment to the boat. I also I go ahead and tighten these up while I'm here. You can always mess with them a little bit later if you need to. You shouldn't have to. Alright. Now our next step, we'll wait on the uh, lever control. We'll do that last. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the back of the boat now, put the gudgeon plates, uh, which hold the rudder. We're going to attach those with well nuts to the back of the boat, and then we'll attach the end of the cable and all that hardware uh, in our next step. All right, so the next part that we're going to uh, install, it's the containment or the capture plate for the end of your cable. You'll see that it goes in kind of the same way it captures it. Um, let me pull that off. So you can see it a little bit better how it works. 
This is also the side that you adjust from. So once we get this plate mounted, um, and then the rudder um, gudgeon plate and the rudder installed, we'll fine tune it from this side before we uh, tighten it up. All right, so this plate, you'll see, now your boat might not have two uh, formed in studs. All the new G2s have formed in studs here that line up with this plate. Um, I think in the past we used to put one of these studs in, now we put in two. If you need extra well nuts, we always send extras, these, and the longer screws because it takes a longer truss head screw to get through your metal and draw this up so it gives you a good snug fit. Same setup that we we're going to use on the gudgeon plates on the back, but we'll show you that in a second. So all we're doing is we're just lining these bad boys up. As you can see very clearly, the arthritic hands at work here. And it should be a nice, real important with these, do not cross thread them. It is a pain, you gotta tap them out. Um, the plate should fit on real nice. Now I'll leave this back one loose for the time being because the gudgeon uh, plate for the rudder, the top part of it, actually fits right underneath if you want to get a close-up of that see how that fits underneath then you know you're lined up correctly so what we're going to do is we're going to mark where this goes notice we line up the outside edges put a mark there put a mark there and that's going to be your first drill point for your 3 8 drill bit for your well nuts because we got two well nuts that go here and two that go in the back of the boat and you'll see how we set that up in a minute all right no fuss no muts must well nuts should drop straight in Make sure you clean up any of that slop from around the hole. These things make a really nice watertight fit if you've done the job correctly. Just They just drop right in. And then your gudgeon plate with two uh, truss head screws should fit right in. Now I usually just leave that uh, finger tight for right now because we're going to do the backside gudgeon plate uh, connection point uh, ver the very next thing. Now. You'll see a lot of folks do this this way. Doesn't really matter, but what I've noticed, that makes the holes in your boat an inch lower, and I always worry about any possible water penetration. So I flip this thing over and go just like that. And then that way, you've moved the holes, you've acclimated those holes above the water line. So same thing here. Oh, man, I'm getting old. Same thing here, you just find your spots, mark, mark, remove that plate. Then drill your holes. And for those of you that are getting nervous about drilling holes in this part of your boat, these plates or these well nuts do a very good job of uh, drawing in on themselves so they create a watertight uh, connection point. So don't fear, don't fret, it's all good. You don't need much of a connection point. Okay, that, that's just about all my nerves. <laughs> um, so now do your screws on this side. Make sure not to push them in real hard. Believe it or not, these, these uh, little well nuts will actually push in and end up inside of your boat. So you want to make sure you're drawing them, drawing them tight first and then uh, torquing them down. A lot of people, I've seen them go like this and pop them in and then all of a sudden the well nut's inside the boat. You don't want that. I'm just very 
initially just gently tightening these down. We'll torque them down really good here in a minute. We just want to get all of our connections done first. And then we'll tighten. Same thing here. We normally use a screw gun in production, but we're not using it here today because we want to take as much time as possible and uh, steer you in the right direction. tightening down our one that goes into a brass fitting the ones that are going into your uh, well nuts no need no need to uh, totally go crazy on tightening them down you just want to draw them up so that they're tight you'll feel them tightening up as you continue through the process here and once again you know Every now and again, you want to go back and check all your hardware, you know, especially these well nuts. Um, they have a tendency to want to loosen up a little bit. Uh, every time we use our boats, we, we check all of our hardware, including our handle hardware. Uh, you just don't want anything to fail while you're uh, enjoying your boat. Okay. Now, we're going to make the connections to the rudder. Okay. Now is when the fun starts. So here's our rudder assembly. It's a true course rudder from Select Designs. Uh, they've updated it or upgraded it with a bungee return. Evidently, they were getting stuck in that position, so they put a bungee return so it doesn't do that anymore. You'll see there's a stainless steel plate that we fabricate that bolts right up with just two, I think these are number eight uh, half inch uh, machine screws, um, or I'm sorry, wood screws that we just uh, connect it with. Nice, good connection point. We just let that drop right down into there. You take your cable, and as I said, you want to bring them up on this. And just finger tighten it down. Don't make it too super tight. <laughs> You'll see there's a little ball bearing return that holds this pin into this hardware as well as into your cable. So we just go through the cable or through the hardware into the cable connection and it's one of those little terminals that they put on them. I usually need to screw it in a little bit to get it to stay. There you go. Now one thing we've noticed is this ring, if this, if this uh, pin is up high, this ring can actually get in between, jam up, and we've actually seen uh, a cable bent uh, one of our dealers had in uh, Norway. So what you want to do is you want to make sure when you insert this pin, push it all the way down. Then there's no way for this to interfere. So we're, we're looking at an upgrade of a smaller ring on this, but for right now, as long as you push it in, it works just fine. All right, as you can tell, we're backing up a little bit because this has to go underneath of your bungee. If it doesn't, then your bungee is going to catch on it all the time, and you're going to put a kink in the cable. Not good. So, backtrack. Go ahead and do that real quick. Slide your grommet up. Okay, now we're back where we were before. We're going to go back, and we're going to set this thing where it belongs. All right. And put our pin in it. Push our pin all the way down. There's plenty of clearance for that pin to function. So just that way this doesn't catch. All right. Now we also come back in here and we put um, two of these three uh, sixteenths cable clamps. And you can put them wherever you want. There is no right and wrong place. Um, I happen to opt to just look at my cable and kind of dress it up. You don't want a big crimp or an angle here. You want to make this a nice smooth sweep so that your control, you know, when it goes back and forth, doesn't bind up. All right. So we'll take uh, a second, put uh, one of these uh, cable clamps in, and then you can always decide where you like to put your next one. I put it up near the rudder, or near er, the rudder. Er. Uh, 
all right so this cable uh, connector and then I put another one back here you can put it wherever it makes the most sense for you you can always pull it and manipulate it as you see fit when the time comes I'll put it there I'm we're gonna move to the front of the boat finish up our uh, lever control uh, connections and then uh, we'll fine-tune all right now you'll see that we put the handle back on and we're going to go ahead and put the lever on. Uh, one thing that we'll do now is we'll make sure we tighten up all this um, Phillips head hardware that's holding our backer plate here. We'll just go ahead and make sure all this is tight too. Don't forget to put your handle back on. Okay, so now we've got this black. It's almost like a bushing. It's more of a beauty ring. It just looks a lot better than that. Um, and it also allows us to... Uh, connect it on both sides so that the uh, lever doesn't want to slide in and out. So um, what we normally will do is just put um, uh, two sheet metal screws in. I think they're like number number eight. And it's just just enough to snug it down. That keeps it from wanting the plate from spinning and also sandwiches that hardware so it doesn't want to go anywhere. Now, we'll put our lever on. We're going to put a nylock nut, real important nylock nut. And that's a half inch nut, so we get our hard uh, tools for it. Oop, wrong way. All right, and then just tighten them down. Hold your lever, lever so it doesn't end up spinning around inside the boat and bending the wire, which is never good. And I take this all the way down where it's kind of snug because you want your rudder to stay where you put it. You don't want to have to constantly be managing, um, you know, holding your hand on the rudder control. And you don't want to get it too tight. And what you see is some of the nylock nut coming off because of the, the sharp edge on that. Uh, but now you can see wherever you put it, it'll stay. Just firm it down. It doesn't have to be real, real tight. Okay, now if you look towards the back, that's straight up and down. And you can see, if you bring the camera on around, you can see that the rudder is cocked off the one side. That's why we just hand tighten these. A little bit more. There you go. Now she's nice. The rudder is nice and straight. The control lever is nice and straight. And what we'll do is we'll take that same 7 16 wrench set and we'll tighten this down. Once again, you can put Loctite on this. This isn't as critical um, because it's where you can get to it very easily. Um, and sometimes if you need to, to adjust it, Loctite becomes a pain in the rear end to deal with. So I would just say hand tighten these down to where you're comfortable. And then Greg, if you'll keep a, on the rudder, you'll see as we, uh, as we go through the motions, there's your range of motion. You'll see there's a stop on the back of this terminal, which you'll need to get close for. Um, there's a stop on the back of the terminal that stops the rudder at that angle. And then in the opposite direction, you'll see there's a stop bar right here that stops it as well. That just keeps you from bending your cable. Deflection you see here, we've run um, a couple of these rudders, about 10,000 cycles, and we haven't had any failure on that. The only failure has been, and I'll show you, what to avoid. When you pull this rudder off to either store the boat or, or put the boat you know, in your truck or your car or whatever, we recommend you put this cable on this stop. That's what it's there for. It's actually intended as a, as a stop so your your cable doesn't get bent. Whatever you do, don't have the cable on that and mess with your rudder control. It will bend the cable inside the boat. Very, very pain in the rear end thing to happen. Uh, there's not too many things we can do about it. Just remember, if you've got your cable terminal on that stop right there, don't touch the rudder control. When you get to your destination, pop that off. Pop your rudder in. 
put your retaining pin. Just push them all the way down. It takes a little bit of oomph, but you got muscles. You're a kayaker. And then just remember your pin at the bottom of your rudder so that your rudder doesn't pop off. It probably won't with this uh, cable here, but reinforce that uh, rudder staying in place with your retaining pins. And whatever you do, don't forget, press in the grommet. That just helps with a nice waterproof fit. That's, that's it for this um, um, first DIY. If you have any problems, email us. You can call us at our office, 410-489-4221. Uh, I think the kit is $299, um, and we send extra parts, extra hardware, um, and uh, if there's anything you need on it, always feel free to call us. Thank you so much. Greetings from Santa Cruz. Happy kayak.